putting cell towers on the moon. That's crazy talk. If you were to build a base on the moon and you wanted to put towers, you could have relay towers of someone, an astronaut, say, or a robotic piece of equipment driving away from the base, talking back to a tower, then back to the main base, and then back to Earth. That's Trent Martin, Vice President of Space Services at Intuitive Machines, speaking in a video placed in Nokia's blog. NASA awarded Nokia $17 million to provide a 4G LTE system on the moon. This is an artist's rendering of a moon robot rover communicating with a lunar landing module using Nokia Bell Labs' self-configuring cellular network. According to Nokia, the first uncrewed mission targeted for late 2022 will validate its technology by integrating and deploying a standalone LTE 4G cellular solution on an Intuitive Machines Nova C lander. The first mission will confirm the readiness of cellular technologies as the communication standard for future space missions and pave the way to a sustainable human presence on the moon by the end of the decade. As NASA puts it, We're going to the moon to stay by 2024. President John F. Kennedy first said so in 1961. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Communications development played a role with Echo One, the first communications satellite that also probably was the first inflatable used in space, followed by Telstar, which helped TV network video span the Atlantic. The need for improved moon video is one of the reasons NASA selected Nokia's cell system. As Thierry Klein, the lab leader for enterprise and industrial automation at Nokia Bell Labs, explained in a video placed in Nokia's blog. They have greater needs for video, they have greater needs for robotic control, they have more sensors, more devices, more things that get connected in their networks, and the demands from the applications are just greater. What appeals to NASA the most? Well, I think the, the main advantage is really improved throughput, improved latency, what else about Nokia's 4G LTE system helps NASA? They can benefit from the investment that's made in those technologies. So they don't have to reinvent the wheel in some sense and invest in their own technologies when the technologies that have been developed by the telecom industry can be leveraged and can be reused and can be hardened for the space applications. It's a much better reuse of the most advanced capabilities. Previous moon mission video was inspirational, but it lacked today's high resolution. Here are astronauts John Young and Charlie Duke in 1972. Come on out here and give me a salute. Big Navy salute. Off the ground, on the floor. There we go. Compare the video with the high resolution still photo that Duke captured. The 4G LTE system delivers that clarity. What's the difference? The systems that we typically use in aerospace have a very low amount of data that you can send back and forth between a spacecraft and the Earth or a spacecraft and another spacecraft. LTE offers a different technology that did not exist in that marketplace. And so this test for us allows us to get a much higher bandwidth of data. It allows for future expansion if you were to build a base on the moon and you wanted to put towers. You could have relay towers of someone, an astronaut, say, or a robotic piece of equipment driving away from the base, talking back to a tower, then back to the main base, and then back to Earth. So it gives you a way to create a network, just like a cellular network here on the Earth. It gives you a way to do that on the moon. You can also use the same kinds of technologies in space between satellites, satellite to satellite communication. So it offers a unique new way of doing communications that we haven't really done in the aerospace industry until now. Fly me to the moon. After the robots fly to the moon, within two years, humans will follow. This is NASA's next generation human space capsule. Orion will take humans to the moon, where, who knows, one of them may be the first to sing since the last men on the moon did. I was strolling on the moon one day. It made others want a moonwalk, too. But I digress. Martin, speaking in a Nokia blog, talked about the 2022 robotic mission and testing the Nokia LTE cell system. The mission in 2022 includes a NASA drill 
and a NASA science experiment that is looking to drill down into the surface of the moon to look for water ice, and then an instrument to measure what's coming out of the drill cuttings as the drill is drilling down into the surface. In addition, we're flying our own experiment that we call the Hopper, which is a smaller little spacecraft that comes off of the big one and lands down inside of a crater, again, looking for water ice. And then on that same mission, we're flying the LTE. But in order to test the LTE, we have to get away from the lander. So we land in a certain spot, and then we want to prove that I can drive away and be checking back, constantly calling back to the lander. And so just like your LTE system works on the surface of the Earth, it works the same way on the moon. We have to drive far away, talk back to the lander, and then we can communicate back to the Earth from the lander. So that's the intent of the rover system, is to give that LTE some mobility to get further away from the lander than simply talking right on the lander itself. That doesn't really test what you want to test. The robotic rover testing the LTE system won't be the same as the old days of astronauts riding in a lunar rover from the Apollo missions. Here, John Young drives the rover in 1972, while Charlie Duke observes. Man, you are really bouncing. Is he on the ground at all? Yes. 10 kilometers. Huh? He's got about two wheels on the ground. Duke gives mission control feedback on the rover performance and Young's ability as a driver in the low gravity of the moon. Man, that was all four wheels off the ground there. Okay, max stop. Okay, I don't want to do that. Okay, excuse me. A new generation of astronauts will have their turn when NASA's Artemis mission will land the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024. So does $17 million sound like a lot of money for a Nokia 4G LTE cellular communication system on the moon? President Kennedy once commented about the cost of space exploration. I think that uh, we must pay what needs to be paid. I don't think we ought to waste any money, but I think we ought to do the job. Doing the job now means robotic exploration of the moon by 2022. The use of a cell system on the moon. And who knows, one day, cell towers on the moon. Maybe not quite like this one. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.